Hey there, storytellers. Today I'm back uh, and I thought we would talk about seven tips to plan your fiction series. So if you're watching this video, you probably had an idea to write a fiction series and maybe you've already started in the planning stages, which is great. Uh, there is a bit of planning ahead to, uh, to help you understand the type of series you want to write. So let's dive into it. Tip number one, learn about the type of series and choose what type you are planning on writing. We talked about this in the previous video where I go more in depth on the three different types of fiction series. So what type of series are you planning to write? Is it dynamic where each story follows a character or a group and the plot evolves over time? Like by the time you get to the, you know, the final book in the, in the series, for example, Lord of the Rings or Hunger Games, or is it an episodic series? Uh, this is a series of books linked by theme setting character uh, and if this is similar to what I'm writing now with my new women's fiction series it's the same world but there's a different main character for each book um, however the villain uh, which the main villain villain is hidden right now but by the time you get to the last book the main villain will be revealed uh, or are you writing a standalone series where each uh, book features the same character over all the books? For example, Jack Reacher series by Lee Child. So I dig deeper into each type of series in my previous video. If you need uh, a bigger explanation, please look at the first video. I'll, I'll link that below. Tip number two, figure out the theme of your series and of each book. As far as theme goes, each book in your series needs a strong sense of theme that ties the series together. Theme is discovered by learning about the wounds and the fears and the lies that your main character believes. This will mean digging into their background and quite often it's their childhood, teenage years, where you will find um, the biggest wounds and their biggest fears. Now this is the process I went through um, as I, uh, you know, wrote out my um, Cowboy Clean Romance series, I, I dug into the background of each of the brothers. There's seven brothers in this uh, series, and each story is set in a small mountain town in Montana. And uh, it's about brothers who are orphaned and adopted into a family where the couple couldn't have children of their own. Each story features a different brother and a second chance with the woman he loved years ago. And so um, this is... Uh, the type of series um, where you, you, you know, I, I took some time to dig through, uh, you know, each wound of each brother, but also of the, of the heroine, because the heroine had uh, her wounds too, right? And so understanding theme of the series and of, and of each book is important. But perhaps you're writing a thriller or a fantasy sci-fi where the, uh, the theme is, often how characters stand up to evil, but not always. Um, if your series is focused on one character, this will dive deeper into details like, what will it mean for this character to take action and stand up to evil? What will your character do about the problem? Uh, another twist would be, what if your main character's friends won't uh, stand up you know, against the evil with them? What will your character do? So the theme of overcoming evil with good in your series will give you lots of ways to explore that theme, if that's your theme. Uh, there's many different types of themes. Theme is important uh, because your character and understanding their wounds and their fears and the, the lies that they believe, that is really what carries the character and makes them relatable and makes the reader root for them, uh, whether it's a book or a movie, uh, but makes the reader root for them in that in the first book but also then throughout the series so really give that some thought and write down as you brainstorm write down your ideas tip number three uh, brainstorm to really understand your series genre this is important to understand uh, you know it's important to understand what you're writing it's a good idea to read and study other books in the genre you're writing to get an idea of what popular book covers and stories that readers are enjoying. For example, I studied other uh, authors in the clean romance genre, and so I have an idea of the book covers and also the stories that readers uh, like to read. 
It's also important to be consistent with the way you write between each book in the series. So if you have a particular style of writing for book one, for example, uh, try to keep that style of writing similar for book two in the series. Uh, you know, that being said, in the planning stage, do try to keep it simple. Otherwise, it, it can feel overwhelming uh, when you're brainstorming your series. And I, I can speak from experience because I often feel overwhelmed. Um, I do I often feel overwhelmed uh, when I am planning out my series because uh, I'm trying to, to figure out how to get all these ideas uh, together uh, for one book. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Use your genre to flesh out your ideas for your series. One important key is if you're writing a dynamic series, try to escalate the conflict and the stakes uh, from book to book. This will pull readers into the series and then they won't want to put the books down, right? So that's kind of important. And tip number four, create a blueprint of your characters and their arcs across the series. Your character arc is how your characters transform throughout each book in the series. So if you're writing a dynamic series where the same character goes across each book, uh, questions to ask, how does your character start the series? And then how do you envision that they will end the series? You know, work towards your main character's change and transformation, because that's the ultimate, uh, you know, readers are looking for that. Maybe they don't know they're looking for that, but subconsciously they're looking for how does the main character change and grow throughout in a dynamic series it would be throughout the first book from where they're perhaps timid fearful shy toward the end of the series where they are brave enough to face the big villain right and so once you know your series theme it will help you work through uh, the details of your character arc across the series because the theme will deal with their wounds right and their law and the lies they believe and so that will really dig deep into who your character is and the transformation that's needed, uh, uh, you know, by the time you reach the last book. And so at the beginning of your story, your main character will believe the opposite of how they feel at the end of your series. Uh, so this is, this is the transformation again. So at the beginning, when your main character is first introduced, uh, they might believe that they are weak and that they are worthless. And by the by the end, through a series of facing challenges and overcoming them, having some victories, they will uh, really get a glimpse that they are, you know, braver than they originally thought they were, right? That's just one example. But um, so it's important to understand your main character's misbeliefs and wounds. This will really guide your theme. Think about new problems that will show up once your character learns the lesson. For example, in the first book of uh, The Hunger Games, um, Katniss wouldn't have wanted to face President Snow, not in that first book, but by book three, she has a new passion and you know bravery to confront the evil. And, and of course, this refers to a dynamic series. In a standalone book series, uh, where there is a different character in each book of the series, each main character will have a character arc that will be transformed, well, transformed by the end of each book. So that'll be for each single book in the series, right? Uh, so you think about these things uh, and the type of um, series you're writing, because that will really help lay things out for you as to how you will write the series. Tip number five, brainstorm your villain. And this is even if you have more than one villain because that's possible, right? Especially in a dynamic series, you might have, uh, you might have, or an episodic series actually, because um, I'm, I'm finding in my women's fiction series that I do, have a, I do have a villain for each story. However, there is a larger villain uh, who hasn't really been revealed yet that will be revealed. Uh, by the end, you know, in this case, uh, book seven of the series. And so, uh, you know, brainstorm your villain, even if you have more than one. Everything seems to start with the villain, or sometimes called the antagonist. Knowing your villain is key to planning your book series. 
This will help you plan the plot of your book series. Now, I hadn't realized how important a villain is. Like, to figure out the details of a villain, I hadn't realized that, you know, until, I think until I got to, you know, writing book two or three even of my, uh, when I had first started writing of my clean billionaire romance, I, I, um, I didn't realize how important the villain actually was. But it's true. Once you figure out your villain and you know the their needs and their motivation and their goal and uh, you know and and their backstory, it will really help to figure out your main character uh, because they are kind of opposites, right? And and in some books um, they say that um, uh, the villain is really the opposite of what the, the protagonist or your main character could be if she would kind of go down the bad route, right? And so th that's interesting. I hadn't thought of it like that, but that really is quite uh, an aha moment for me, I have to say. And so, you know, do really brainstorm your, your antagonist uh, and your villain. The, the Hunger Games, for example, uh, there's a uniting thread where the districts will defeat the capital, but it only it it begins in book one with Katniss, right? Uh, eventually, it will come. It comes to uh, where the districts are united to defeat the capital. So your series villain will provide the main conflict that your main characters will have to face. Your 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 main character will have to face multiple levels of villains before confronting the biggest villain. Now this is in a dynamic series, uh, but also an episodic, um, because I'm writing that right now, and the episodic uh, is also a similar uh, a way of um, figuring out uh, the villain and that the villain needs to get larger and more complicated by the time you reach the last book. So in a dynamic series, because each book has the same main character and often a smaller bad guy and one big villain that becomes more evil throughout the series, then near the end, uh, it is the, the evil, the villain, the evil villain, is quite powerful. This type of series will have a new level of evil, really, from book to book. Uh, in each book, the villain will have a specific goal. Sometimes the villain makes progress and sometimes he has to take a few steps back. Uh, and there are individual plans that the villain has for each book. There is, in standalone books, there is also an antagonist or villain. Uh, and the same guidelines apply, but there won't be an overarching villain like in the dynamic series. Uh, for example, in uh, the Bridgerton series, each book focuses on a different hero and heroine, and of course a different romantic couple. But there is also a different villain in each book. But there's not an overarching villain because this is a this is a standalone series. So brainstorming the details of your main character and your villain is is really important to understanding um, how this all ties in together and to understand your book series as a whole. So write out the details. I encourage you to write out the details. Even um, make a chart. Uh, I, I remember reading, um, uh, who was it? Oh, J.K. Rowling, uh, who uh, wrote out actually a very detailed plot outline for uh, Harry, when she wrote the Harry Potter series. And, um, and I, think, I think that that can help, like, um, you know, where you detail um, the, the world and the main character and the villain and each smaller villain for each book. And detail those out write them out I think you will find that super helpful so tip number six start laying out the plot of your series and each individual book each individual book from book one to the last book in your series should flow uh, really organically and brainstorm and write out the specific goal and conflict in each book when you work at developing your villain for the series it also helps to give you insight into the overarching goals of your protagonist. Use the building blocks of series goals and conflict. Uh, sometimes your villain will win, sometimes your main character wins, but most of the time at the final victory, uh, that will belong to the main character 
and the or the hero at the last book in the series. Uh, for example, Hunger Games, Katniss has small wins, but the smaller wins uh, are resolved by the end of each book. But the larger conflict for Katniss is to defeat President Snow and to overthrow the capital. So the smaller goals um, need to be resolved book by book. Um, because if you don't, readers might get frustrated and they might not read the rest of your series, right? And so, you know, there's a bit of a bit of a fine line there uh, to make sure that there's still conflict from book to book, but that there's some a little bit of resolution at the end of each book, even if you can still be resolution, even if um, there's unanswered questions, right, that take them and a hook that takes them that impels them to read the next book. Um, so I, I, there's a way to do that. Um, so. Um, if you have an overarching villain that's across all your books in your series, somehow they need to get stronger and stronger by the time you write the last book, uh, which will be the ultimate uh, confrontation. So, you know, um, brainstorm uh, a blueprint or a grid, or you know, or or a series bible. You can you can write that in a in a in a notebook. Have a notebook where you have a series bible, and and brainstorm where each book should start you know right in the scenes and where they should go as you start writing and that i think that will really help you also if you have a bigger story world like a fantasy or a science a science fiction make sure the world building stays constant throughout each book uh, for example if you have a different government planet mystical world where people live describe those things keep them consistent throughout each book. This is this is really where uh, um, a series Bible comes in handy. Uh, I I need to write those things down. I, I mean, I keep a notebook and that's kind of how I keep track of it. But I think with this one, I was thinking I need to make a chart uh, because I've never written an, uh, well, I guess that's not true now that I've I'm finished the, the middle grade of uh, of my Red, Red Maple Creek series. Um, but that that one is a dynamic uh, series where it's um, a story that's tied together through all well I'm planning on seven books but that the story is like it's a, it's a continuous story right uh, but there's like a villain in each book but then there's an overarching villain by the time you get to the last book uh, so you know this um, it's important to have um, some kind of guideline that you're following so i would encourage you uh, you know you can, you can actually get a poster board really cheap uh, at a dollar store or something and write out uh and write out the detail of um of each book in your series and um you know each character uh and uh the story world you know the the world building and uh, other other details, but write those out because I um, that'll help you to stay consistent. And you know that each book, you know, it won't have those those errors that you know readers like to email you about. And so I think that will really help. Transformation of both your main character and your story world is important. This will tie in to your theme as you plan your series. Tip number seven, brainstorm subplot and minor characters. Here's the thing I've noticed as I've continued to write a fiction series. I've noticed that minor characters and the community or world in which the series is set has a big influence on the main storyline. Your subplot and minor characters are there to really reveal more of the theme of your major plot of what's really being said uh, what story are you really telling in your major plot? That's kind of what the subplot and the minor characters are there for. So I found that truly understanding the subplot and the minor characters, uh, you know, uh, generally that's re referred to as story B, really helps you give to give you more insight into the big story or story A. Understanding your subplot and the minor characters will really help you to get get into um, what's actually happening in your story um, I was just thinking of an example 
of uh, In Canada's True North, which is the first book in the middle middle grade series. Um, you know, there is um, there's conflict uh, in the family, but there's also conflict at school, where Kanata has to face uh, a big bully in her new school, because now she's she's with the Woodhaven family, and uh, she needs to face this big bully. She's always, you know, she's told often how weak she is and how um, she will never, you know, amount to anything, and um, that her her background she's of a mixed breed that her background um you know will will you know ruin her future and that she won't she'll just ne never never amount to anything she'll, she'll never be anything uh because of all of that so she believes this at the beginning um but then um she starts to um you know, kind of frustrated, she starts to, because her, her parents have passed away, right? And so she's she's an orphan. And uh, she's been thrust into this big family, and they've gone up north. And so she is trying to figure out who she is. That's a big part of it. She's trying to figure out who she is. And she feels like she never belongs. And so, uh, so it's internal, maybe an internal um, antagonist villain. But there's also external villains that she has to face, like the bully, uh, but also villains like just nature itself. That's also a villain because nature isn't kind <laughs> when it when you're out in the wild. This is the main uh, story A, but story B, the subplot, is is actually generally the family and some of these other friends that she has at school that become actual friends, not villains. And, but through the family, she starts to understand more of who she is. And um, she finds acceptance from Mrs. Woodhaven, which is really what she's she's wanting. She's longing for acceptance, belonging, and love really is what she's wanting. And she does find that in Mrs. Woodhaven. And, and gradually, the rest of the family comes to accept her. Uh, but the subplot really reveals... Um, those things that are missing in her identity, you know, from um, that she's trying to figure out. And so this is how subplot works with the main story. Um, and so I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea uh, as you start to plan your story and as you start to brainstorm. So, you know, really write out who these supporting characters are and the subplot because it really will be um, a big help to you as you plan your series. I hope some of those tips have helped you today and that it will help you to really, you know, map out and brainstorm and write a blueprint uh, of your, of these different points of the plot, of the theme, of the type of series you're writing, of your villain. Uh, I just, I, I hope, uh, and, and, the, and the character arcs, um, but I hope this will will help you to really understand your series in a really deep way so that you can write a fantastic series. If you're wanting extra help, I do have a PDF. The link is down below. Uh, that uh, is free, and I hope that it really helps you to plan out uh, your series to give you more a detailed guide on uh, hopefully what will help you to plan your series. Talk to you next time and happy writing.